Hey guys, welcome back to Barry's Corner. It's Emily here and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the books that I want to read in February. So in January, I did not stick to my TBR, like not one bit. Like I think one book was on my January TBR that I read and I read nine books, which is really, really good for me. And I do want to continue that momentum of reading a lot. However, I feel myself going into a reading slump and February is really really busy month for me i am so freaking stressed so this tbr is a little bit ambitious but i know i'm not gonna get to all of it so let's just get on into the video but before we do please subscribe comment down below like this video all my social links are down in the description box below as well as my amazon wish list if you want to gift me a book now let's get on into the video the first book that i want to read i have had on countless tbrs it is becoming by michelle obama why have I not read this yet? I do not know. I do not know. I think this was on my January TBR. I didn't read it. Oh my gosh. Like what is wrong with me? I want to read it so freaking bad. I just, I don't, I just haven't. I just haven't. I think, like I said before, it's because I'm waiting for the right moment and the right time, but it will literally never be the right moment and the right time. So hold me accountable. Literally go on any video and yell at me to read this book because I need to read it in February. I would like to read it in February. I know that this book is going to freaking change my mind and blow my mind. Change my mind. I don't know. Um, but please just convince me or pressure me into reading this book because I need to and I want to. This is about Michelle Obama, which was the two presidents ago, the first lady of Barack Obama. Um, this follows her life. It does not follow the presidency at all. Even though she is Democrat, you do not need to be Democrat to read this book. Follows her growing up as a black person in a poor or low income household. She goes to Princeton and she's the only black kid in her class. And then of course it follows her being the first lady and wanting to make a change. I've heard nonstop great things about this book and I'm sure that you guys are sick of me saying that I've heard nonstop great things about this book, but I'm really excited to read it. So I need to get to it already. Gosh, I'm annoyed with myself. Okay, next book. Another book that was on my January TBR that I did not get to is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I don't know why I have not read this book. Tell me why. Like genuinely, like what is wrong with me? Like I don't know why I haven't read this book. My boyfriend for Christmas got me the third installment and I just, I have all the books. So why haven't I read this? I don't know. It's very thick and daunting and intimidating, but everybody raves about this book. There's so much hype surrounding this book. Emma Books raves about this book and I know that I will adore it. I know that I will love it, but I just haven't gotten the chance to pick it up. Um, this follows a girl named Nova and in her fantasy world, there are people called the Renegades who are basically superheroes that save the town and the world that she is in. However, Nova's parents got killed and she blames the Renegades for not being there and saving them. So so now she's a part of the rebels who are against them and her job is to infiltrate the renegades and she finds some love along the way i'm truly truly excited for this book i just i don't know and i'm gonna be honest and say that i might not get to this book this month but it's gonna be on my bedside table so if i really i hope i pick it up i really do i hope i pick it up i don't know so next book <laughs> But the next book is Smash It by Francina Simone. I believe Francina Simone is a booktuber here on booktube and I heard a little bit of buzz going on about this book when it first came out but recently I haven't heard much about it but when I read the synopsis and it was also 50% off at Barnes and Nobles I was hooked. It is about this girl named Olivia James and she is done with letting her insecurities get the best of her. So after showing up at a Halloween party in khaki shorts and everybody kind of eyeing her, she's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to make an effort list. So the first rule, I guess, was be bold, do the things that scare you, two, learn to take a compliment, and three, stand out instead of stand back. So she starts following this list and she says yes to a date and she makes new friends. However, a part of this list is following her heart and who she wants to love. However, she's finding herself falling in love with three different guys and two of them are her best friend. Like, come on, tell me that that doesn't sound so good. I really want to not fall into a reading slump. So a lot of these books, other than the first two, are going to be romance novels because those are the books that I consume very, very quickly and that I really, really enjoy. So I'm really excited to get into this book. And this is an African-American author, which I believe we should all be trying to put on our bookshelves. And I'm very, very excited to get to this book. 
The next book I am so extremely excited for, it is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. This is a companion novel to her first novel, The Kiss Quotient, which I absolutely adored. It's such good diversity with Asian representation and autistic representation, and this is kind of in the same realm. This follows Kai, who is the cousin of the male main character in the first book, Michael, and he is autistic, and he doesn't really like when people poke and prod at his feelings, and also he doesn't really like when people aren't in his space, so his mother is scared that he's never going to find love and marry, so she takes it into her own hands and find a girl who is a mixed race, which love that representation, to kind of seduce her son so she finds this girl named Esme and Esme is like my family is in really bad financial trouble and since he is an American she believes that he will help them out with all their financial needs so she starts to seduce him but in the end she really starts kind of falling for him herself I love love the synopsis of this I've heard kind of mixed things about this book like if you love the kiss quotient this will be very underwhelming and you won't like it but if you did not like the Kiss Quotient, this will be a lot better. So I don't know where I will fall on that spectrum. I give the Kiss Quotient a four point, I think, seven five? I don't remember. It was like one of those books that I could not give it a five stars, but I loved it so much. So I'm hoping that this will be a five out of five stars. And there's another companion novel coming very, very soon with another one of the cousins, which I'm so freaking excited because I love that cousin so much. So I'm really excited to read this book. So recently, there's a lot of drama going around the Bachelor and Bachelorette community right now. However, I am still watching Matt James' season. Um, so in between then, each episode, I want to read The Selection by Kira Cass. Now, before I have read The Selection, and I honestly really, really loved it. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was very entertaining. I know it's not a literature masterpiece, but it gave me everything that I was wanting. But then when I got to the second book, I was like, yeah, no, this is not working for me anymore. It's going so slow. And then the third book, I DNF'd. So I have a lot of negative feelings towards this series, and... I've always wanted to pick it up, see if I would really truly like it. Maybe it was the timing of everything, but I just, I couldn't because of the negative feelings that I had towards the series. But now I think it's a good time. I'm watching The Bachelor and hopefully I will enjoy these series. This series, it's not the series, that was bad grammar. Um, but the selection is about this girl named America and in her utopian society, this is labeled as The Hunger Games meets The Bachelor because there are districts and the lower the district, basically the more poor you are so she's in a pretty low district and there is this lottery system that happens whenever they want to wed a prince so one person from each district gets picked and they get to do sort of like a bachelor and date this prince and by the end he has a queen or princess or i believe she becomes a queen anyways not the point um of course the main character does not want to go. She has a boyfriend from a lower district, but her family really, really needs the money because while they're in there, they get the family gets sent money. So she applies, never thinking anything of it, never thinking that she would get picked, but then in the end, she does. And then it follows her adventure. So I don't know if I'll like it. I hope I like it. Um, I don't know, but these three books are on my TBR for this month. The next book I want to read is Since You've Been Gone by Morgan Matson. This is a book that I read in middle school and I absolutely adored. And I let somebody else read it and then they lost it. And that is where my trust issue started with lending books. Um, but I recently saw this at Mr. K's, my local used bookstore, and I bought it for only $3. And I was like, yes, I cannot wait to reread this book because the main character's name is Emily. Like, my name is Emily. Like, that's so cool. So in this book, Emily... Her, she's very shy, she's always in her shell, but her best friend Sloane always got her out of her shell and just made her have a good time. But one day Sloane goes missing and the only thing that is left is a bucket list that Emily believes that if she follows and does every single thing on the bucket list, Sloane will be revealed or she will find Sloane. So there's stuff like kiss a stranger, go skinny dipping, steal something and all this stuff. And then she recruits somebody kind of like it a life Chloe Brown she recruits somebody to help her fulfill the bucket list I remember loving this but not liking the ending I don't know why it's been app like years it's been years um but I'm excited to get into this book it's a little bit of a I mean it's not that thick I, I mean it's kind of thick I don't know but I'm excited and I hope that all my middle school dreams are fulfilled the next book I want to read is also by Morgan Matson. It is Save the Date, and I, I believe this is her last book that she put out. I got this on my 15th birthday, and honestly, mostly because it was signed, but at that time in my life, Morgan Matson was all that I was reading, and I absolutely adored her. This follows a girl named Charlie, and her sister is getting married. 
she really wants to go because this is the last time her whole family will be together because this house is being sold. However, everything starts to go wrong when the wedding planner quits. The biggest crush that she has ever had attends the wedding and so much goes wrong. The wedding planner's assistant is really freaking cute. A random dog shows up. So everything's going wrong. It takes place in, I think, in just one day over the wedding. Um, but I've heard that the love in here or like the romance in here is not too insta lovey so hopefully that reigns true this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a thicky um but i find it really i love the cover and i'm really really intrigued by the synopsis so hopefully i'm like hoping that i'll read since you've been gone and be like hey maureen Matson, let's just continue and read this book so yes on to the second to last book the next book is a book that I read countless of times and I honestly think it's time for a reread because I haven't read it in a year or two. It is My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. This book um, was my love or like this is what fueled my love of reading in middle school. Like I read it so many times and I just haven't read it recently and I definitely think it's time for a reread. This follows a girl named Samantha Reed and in her home it's it's just very neat clean, tidying. Her mom is like running for governor, senator, I don't really know, but she's somewhere in the political world and she's very rich and kind of judgmental, especially towards the people next door to her because their house is a complete opposite. They're very messy. There's so many kids running around and the mom kind of hates it. So the first thing she said to her child when they were younger, like, do not associate with those people. However, Samantha finds herself falling for one of the kids next door and she has to hide it from her mom. And then something unthinkable happens, which is like one of the plots here, so I can't really tell you what happens, but she has to choose between her mom and these people, especially since her mom doesn't know. It's very, very hard once she finds out the little plot test. So I, I am so excited. This book was everything. Every single time I read it, I always remember giving it five out of five stars. Um, I haven't heard anybody talk about it recently, but I think I remember people talking about it back way back when in booktube so if i like it now i'm definitely going to be telling you all to read this book now the last book i want to read in february is unravel me by tahita mafi if you've seen any of my other videos you would know that this series is my favorite series of all time i understand that it has imperfections and juliet can be a little bit annoying at the beginning However, I think it's mostly for nostalgia reasons and I just remember in middle school this was my favorite series and I absolutely love it. I've reread this series countless of times. So now it's time for another reread. I haven't read it in a year. So in December I read Shatter Me. This is the second book Unravel Me and I know some stuff is about to go down and I'm really prepared for it. If you don't know what the Shatter Me series is about, it's about this girl named Juliet and her touch is lethal. One day this little boy trips over and falls and she tries to help him up but she ends up killing him. So her parents put her into an insane asylum and then a guy comes in who is her roommate. Romance ensues, they break out of there and just this leads her to a whole different world where this there's this guy named Warner who is trying to take over the whole world because while she was in those seven years of in an insane asylum, the world around her was changed completely. So she's just trying to find herself, figure out what the heck is going on. And it's so good. I love it so much. It's so good. I love it so much. Um, I cannot wait for the development. More of her and Warner, more of her and Adam. It's so good. It's so good. I'm, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. And if you haven't read the Shadow Me series, do it. I love it so much. And I think this is going to be one of the first books that I pick up this month. So those are all the books that I want to read in February. There is one honorable mention, which is Transcendent Kingdom, because I will be buddy reading that with my uncle and my aunt. However, I don't think I will be finishing it in February. That's why it wasn't on this list. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and comment and do whatever you want to do. And goodbye.